Game developers need to stop doing this. Now, what is this? You might be thinking. A lot of times when we're making games, the excitement of releasing that game and seeing how good it could possibly go clouds our judgment on the smaller things. Let's look at simulators, for example, because that's what I have the most uh, experience in. A lot of the times, newer game developers will make a simulator, and let's say it's pickaxe simulator, right? Or we can use Ninja Legends as an example, since there was a ton of copies of that game. What they do, instead of making a bunch of meshes for their swords or their pickaxes, is they make one and then recolor it like 10 times, and it just, it's not a great deal. Not only does this make upgrading within the game a lot less exciting, it makes players feel like they don't really need to upgrade. It also makes your game feel a bit lower effort in comparison to other games, especially if they just made some variants. Anyways, I guess what I'm getting at is small props matter. Imagine opening an egg and pet simulator with six different colored cubes. Okay, nothing that makes them original except for the color of them. Would you really keep opening this egg or would you go find a game that you could hatch a titanic neon glowing pet? I would guess the titanic glowing neon pet. Anyways, today a guy needed 10 pickaxe models and two dynamite models. And while coming up with the ideas for these 10 different pickaxes, I realized this is a very slept on step in newer game development. So next time you go to make a game, especially if there's a lot of the same type of props, for example pickaxes, think about how you can stand out. Not only because it looks a lot cooler and way more unique, but because it gives players a more rewarding experience, which in turn makes them want to come back again, again, and again, and builds up a little bit of brand loyalty, meaning if you release another game after this, they're more inclined to at least check it out. Now, when it comes to new developers, I don't think they skip this step because they're lazy. It could be the case for a small minority of people, but I think they skip it because they don't know how to come up with all of these ideas. After all, if you need a hundred, once again example, pickaxes, thinking of a hundred different designs is, well, kinda hard if it's all in one moment. So let me give you my top three ways on how I come up with ideas when I'm making game props. I personally think the easiest way to come up with asset ideas, or at least the themes of them, is just base it on the zone you're building for. Think about pets in an underwater world. You wouldn't have a buffalo, bird, and bison, no, you would have sharks, turtles, and fish. However, that does leave the buffalo, the bird, and the bison available for another zone. And just like that, you already have six different pet ideas. Another way, if you don't have zones in your game, maybe you're not making a simulator and you just need a bunch of the same type of tool for who knows what. Bob the Builder, role play and survive. Maybe you need 10 different screwdrivers. A random theme wheel is so, so fun. I don't think it works the best for most projects, but if you're just making like a fun game with your friends or something that doesn't need to be taken too seriously, a random theme wheel is incredible. Go on Google, type in 50 themes, copy and paste those into a wheel spin website and just run it. You will get some very crazy ideas, especially if you mix themes. For example, my cat is on the desk. Jeff, that is not okay. Get down. Jeff, you got, you can't. Yes, my cat's name is Jeff. Anyways, for example, if you're mixing some themes, let's think of tropical paradise and post-apocalyptic. Completely different themes, right? But if you put those two ideas together, you will definitely end up with a pretty unique asset. Now my last one here, guys, it's a bit controversial, okay? Some people love it, some people hate it. But uh, here it is, AI. Now I am not saying go to a model generator and type in a uh, superhuman pickaxe with glowing eyes. But if you go to like chat GPT and say, I need 50 unique ideas for themes of a pickaxe. I guess we keep going back to that. It'll list out 50 different ideas. Most of them will be garbage, but I feel like at least 10 of them you'll be able to use in your game. Now we have three ways to get unique simulator asset ideas, and we know how important it is to separate your game, making these smaller assets stand out. All that's left is to put these tips into practice and make some incredible games. If you guys have any questions regarding Roblox game development, leave them in the comments below, and if you think it's a good question, drop a like on that comment. There's plenty of time left in 2024 for all of us to be successful and all of us to make some bangers. Anyways, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Have a great day. Later.